also continues to attack major cities of Ukraine. This time, the Russians are fighting the Ukrainians in the city of Valuka and Valuka in the Donetsk region. Despite the fact that it saw heavy losses in this direction, Russia continues to keep the Ukrainians at minimal levels. British intelligence said that the Russians are not prepared to take on the Ukrainians. Even the weather is not in their favor. They added that uh, large forces of both sides are concentrated on the sector of the front, which is toward the Crimea. The struggle is for the control over the land supply line of Crimea. In this video compiled by UATV with the combination of news agencies like Reuters, Archives and Associated Press. You will see the fierce battles taking place in these areas. And you will notice that uh, full preparation and rainy weather conditions continue to retreat Russians and Ukraine. The most intense battles are taking place in the area of Pavlivka and Vohlodar in the Donetsk region. Russia is throwing huge forces into this direction and suffering heavy losses. However, no success is achieved because of the weather, British intelligence notes. This area remains heavily contested, likely partially because Russia assesses the area has potential as a launch point for a future major advance north to capture the remainder Ukrainian-held Donetsk region. However, Russia is unlikely likely to be able to concentrate sufficient quality forces to achieve an operational breakthrough. From the intelligence report of the British Ministry of Defense of November 27th on Twitter. The fierce fighting is also taking place on the outskirts of Bakhmut. The Ukrainian general staff reported that they repelled Russian attacks near Opetna, Solodar, Bakhmut and Yakovlivka. But in the Swatova direction, the initiative is on the Ukrainian side. There, the armed forces of Ukraine continue to push back the Russian forces meter by meter. We don't have the people, the company commander, already the force platoon commander, everyone is changing, people are being killed. We no longer have people left, there is nothing to eat. The head of the Luhansk Regional Military Administration, Serhii Haidai, notes that the success in the area of Kremina and Svatove is due to the poor preparation of the mobilized Russians. The Russian Ministry of Defense tried to close the holes in this sector of the front. I really hope that in the near future we will hear good news from the armored forces of Ukraine regarding the deoccupation of Kremina and Svatove, and then we will move forward, freeing the entire territory of the Lugansk region up to the Russian border. At the same time, according to the Institute for the Study of War, the overall pace of operations along the eastern and southern front line has slowed down in recent days because of the weather. Ukrainian and Russian reporting from critical frontline areas throughout eastern and southern Ukraine, including Svatova, Bakhmut and Ugledar, indicates that operations on both sides are currently bogged down by heavy rain and resulting heavy mud. Temperatures are forecasted to drop throughout Ukraine over the next week, which will likely freeze the ground and expedite the pace of fighting as mobility increases for both sides. From the report of the Institute for the Study of War of November 26. Russia is taking revenge for its failures on the front line, and it takes it out on civilians. The most difficult situation is in Kherson. Since the day the city was liberated by Ukrainian forces, 32 civilians have been killed as a result of Russian shelling, the Ministry of Internal Affairs of Ukraine reported. The threat of new strikes remains high as long as Russian troops control the left bank of the Kherson region. But in Operational Command South, they give positive forecasts. The Russians will not stay there for a long time.
The Russians are already aware of the failure of their military strategy on the right bank of the Dnipro. They built a multi-layer defense along which they retreated. Now the enemy is setting up defensive positions on the left bank of the Dnipro. The enemy has mined the coastline and is setting up firing positions 15-20 kilometers deep because they understand that they will have to retreat. Natalia Humanyuk, head of the press center of the security and defense forces of the operational command South. The armed forces of Ukraine continue to establish fire control over the transport arteries of the enemy. The general staff notes that Ukrainian weapons are already hitting targets deep in the rear of the invaders. The fire damage was confirmed on November 25th in the areas of concentration of enemy manpower in the areas of the settlements of Melitopol, Polohy and Mikhailivka of the Zaporizhia region. The losses of the invaders amounted to more than 100 people wounded. About 10 pieces of military equipment of various types were destroyed as well as two ammunition depots. The lack of success on the front line is pushing Russia toward the second wave of mobilization. Ukrainian intelligence is already recording preparations for it starting on December 10th. This time not only in the Russian Federation, but also in the temporarily occupied territories of Ukraine. Reported by Roman Smoller, Vasil Panasyuk, UATV News.